Well, you guys, I want to introduce you to Terry D. Rush. For 30 years, he has worked on oil rigs. And, you know, I was trying to put this into perspective, Terry, and say that imagine working 30 years on creating a product that is still very much in demand, yet you're not allowed to do it at the moment because the permits aren't coming. What is this like for you? It's very depressing. <laughs> and then uh, my whole life in the oil field, this has been all I've known. You know, I've... I've uh, drove trucks before, but I've come back to the oil field, and uh, we're sitting here doing nothing, and uh, this company is good enough to keep us here, and, and, and it's a great thing, you know, but uh, if his little proposal that he's got coming up, if it goes through, we're doomed. You're talking about more stringent regulations, correct? Yeah. Why would that doom you? From what I understand, that it would just kind of drive out the uh, the companies that here in the United States would make them go elsewhere and uh, it would put us we can't follow. It's got to be so unbelievably difficult especially at a time where I'm sure you know a lot of folks in Louisiana you grew up in Hicks Louisiana uh, who are out of work at the moment. It was, Hicks Louisiana is a very small place and uh, there's not a lot of jobs. There is no jobs. Either you own your own business or you work out here or you work on the military base there at Fort Pope. You've got a, an 18-year-old son and you're responsible for child support payments, correct? And so what happens if John Rind and Hercules, after the first of the year, still don't see permits coming through and, and they've got to let some of you go, if that were to happen? Well, if that was happening, I don't plan on ever being a deadbeat daddy, and I'm not one but it looks like I would probably end up in jail because there's no other jobs to find around where I live. Because they would arrest you for not paying your child support. I could not pay my child support. Looking at the big picture here, Terry, you know, you've obviously paid your taxes, you've done your work, you've done well in this country, in this job, uh, but you were talking about your father, who was a military man, was he not? Yes, ma'am, he was. He spent 22 years in the military, re-enlisted, fought two wars for this country. The Korean War and the Vietnam, he's very proud of this country and he's laying in his military uniform right now. He loved this country. He loved what it was. I love this country, but what it's turning out to be is kind of hard to deal with. If it don't turn around and be what it was, it's never going to be again. And it's got to happen now and not later. We can't afford later. Terry DeRush, who has worked on oil rigs for 30 years. Listen, Dave, Terry, thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate everything that this rig has uh, allowed us to do, and that is tell the story of the shallow water rigs, where there is no stated moratorium against drilling. We're three and a half miles off the coast of Louisiana, yet the permits have slowed to a trickle, isn't Dave? And we wanted to tell this part of the story because Hercules is a small business. It's a 300 million market cap, and we know that small businesses are pretty much responsible for 70 to 80 percent of the hiring in this nation. They're trying to hang on as best they can, and that's a story Fox Business wanted to tell straight from the source. Back to you. Liz, you've been reporting all day. It's terrific reporting about how the permits uh, have been slowing to a trickle. When does the Hercules rigs think this will let up? Well, they don't know, and, and it, didn't, it didn't give them too much hope today when the director of the Bureau of Oceans and Energy Management, Michael Bromwich, announced that even if the moratorium on the deepwater drillers is lifted, that resuming activity would probably not happen in the first month. So that's yet another month for the deepwater gang. Uh, but the shallow water gang, are, say, we're different from them. We, we have a great safety record. And uh, much of the work that's done on this particular rig would have been natural gas, which, of course, as we know, is clean burning. So you're talking about about 20,000 directly related shallow water rig workers who are hanging by tenor hooks. They're very concerned about their livelihood and their jobs. Some of the other names out there in shallow water land have not been able to hang on like Hercules. Hercules is being floated by its international business. Let's just be honest. They've got Malaysian operations, Angola, and that, thank goodness, is keeping this company alive. So. These folks are lucky, and they know they are, and that's why a lot of them were telling me, you know, Liz, we, we're not TV types. We didn't want to come and talk in front of the camera, but we felt if you don't say something now, it, it may be too late. Well, it's great to hear their opinion. I mean, nobody can tell it like the fee people who are on the front line. Uh, it's great that they're able to pay Terry and all the other workers while this moratorium continues, but they can't do that indefinitely. How much longer will they be able to pay the workers if they're not pumping? Mm -hmm first of the year, David. That's when John Rin, the CEO, told us exclusively here on Fox Business he'll probably have to make some very serious decisions. It's $25,000 a day to keep this rig running. 
I, I've watched a lot of these guys. They're, they're doing some of the work around here, painting and, and just checking different small operations, but the drill is completely idle and they're not working. So it's okay. that and then all the other rigs all over here, you're talking $125,000, $150,000 a day and just to sit. Such wonderful wow. people. Good Americans, too. Liz, great work. Thank you very much, Liz. Get back here safe. Thank you, Thank Liz. You.